Hello, my name is Joe Hildreth and welcome to episode 5 of CNC for the Home Hobbyist. In this episode I want to briefly discuss the computer hardware requirements to run Linux CNC. Please keep in mind that I'm not a machinist, engineer, or a teacher. But rather, I'm a home hobbyist that would like to share my experience with CNC machines for the home shop. Hopefully, over time I can present enough material to prevent new users entering the hobby from falling into some of the pitfalls that I've encountered. With that out of the way, let's get started. Here I list the minimum requirements required to run Linux CNC. Now this list is kind of old, so I'll take it with a grain of salt. But there are two locations in which minimum computer requirements are listed in the Linux CNC community. I will provide links uh, to these descriptions in, uh, below the video. The first is in the documentation found at Linux on the uh, LinuxCNC.org website. And there you see the link. And the second is a page on the uh, Linux CNC wiki. And again, I have the link right there below it. But generally speaking, the minimum uh, requirements are as follows. A 700 megahertz x86 processor, although a 1.2 gigahertz x86 processor is recommended. Uh, 384 megabytes of RAM, although 512 megabytes up to 1 gigabyte is recommended, and uh, an 8 gigabytes of hard, di of hard disk space. A graphics card capable of at least 1024 by 768 resolution, which is not using NVIDIA or ATI proprietary drivers, which is not an onboard video chipset that shares the main memory with the CPU. And finally, a network or internet connection, although it's not strictly needed, but useful for updates and for communicating with the Linux CNC community. The first three specifications are pretty easy to meet. If the computer you're wanting to use as your controller was made in the last five or six years, um, most of these you know, are going to be better than what's specified here. So you shouldn't have much to worry about. But the last two, uh, they, they bear a little bit of discussion. So let's talk about graphic cards here just for a minute. Most computers have an integrated video chip to display to your attached monitor. Uh, these display systems usually have some amount of memory for the video chip dedicated for that purpose, but it's minimal. If the computer needs more memory for display, it usually assigns some of the regular computer memory for the video chip to use. Now in normal computer operation, this doesn't affect much of anything. But with a real-time system like Linux CNC, it can have some adverse effects, especially with older hardware. So the general recommendation is to disable the onboard video controller and instead use an add-on video card in its place. Many of these add-on cards are manufactured by NVIDIA and ATI. When using these video cards with Linux in general, uh, an open source driver can be used, but this means that the card may not be used to its fullest potential. The other option when using these cards are to use a closed source proprietary driver from the manufacturer. This means that other features of the card can be used but it comes with a price from a real-time system point of view and can be problematic or even break the real-time system. So the developers of Linux CNC recommend that if you have one of these cards that you should not use the proprietary drivers but instead use the generic driver. Now don't let this recommendation discourage you from trying uh, your machine with the built-in graphics chip. Many of these machines will work just fine with Linux CNC. Uh, you'll need to test the system for latency and other problems anyway, and if there's an issue, it'll show up. So only if you experience a problem with an onboard video card should you consider disabling it and find another add-on card to replace it. The second item in the list referring to a network or internet connection, well, it's not strictly required, but I would suggest that uh, you enable the machine to have a uh, internet connection simply because it makes it easier to upgrade uh, Linux CNC, get uh, different updates for it, to send your NC files to be machined to it, and all sorts of other things. But ultimately, that's up to you. Now let's talk a little bit about other hardware and what I mean by that is that uh, you know you have a computer that you you want to use to run Linux CNC on but there's other hardware that you know you could use to do that but uh, according to the Linux CNC documentation laptops are not generally suited to real-time software step generation and we'll get into that more when we talk about um, 
uh, uh, software step generators versus hardware step generators and stuff like that. But a latency test run for an extended amount of time will help you determine if it would be suitable. So although it's not gener generally recommended, you can use them maybe. Uh, additionally, Linux CNC is reported to run on small autonomous devices such as the Raspberry Pi and the BeagleBone Black. Now, these are like little miniature computers, you know, a little bit a little bit bigger than a credit card or or about the size of a credit card uh, that are standalone little uh, ARM processors. Uh, now this is an advanced application of Linux CNC and I would highly recommend as a new hobbyist to avoid these setups until you are very and I mean very familiar with Linux CNC, the preempt RT kernel patch, and the Linux operating system in general. Finally I just want to very briefly talk about I.O. I.O. stands for input and output and it's the mechanism in which Linux CNC is able to communicate with the outside world. I mean after all a CNC controller that can't actually communicate and control a machine would be pretty useless, right? So Linux CNC supports many types of I.O. Several cards are available that cover a vast variety of needs whether if it's stepper or servo or something else. There are too many to cover here, and I plan on making videos discussing some of these cards as time and hardware, um, you know, uh, available hardware permit me to do that. But additionally, Linux CNC supports using one or more parallel ports for I.O. From a hobbyist point of view, this is the simplest way to get started and the solution that fits most needs. A parallel port, if you are unfamiliar, is the port that is used to connect a printer. Now some newer machines are not equipped with a parallel port, but don't fret that. Parallel port add-on cards are inexpensive, just you know, less than $20, many can be had for less than $10, and uh, they're readily available. So if a machine that you plan on uh, using as your controller doesn't have a parallel port card, uh, you can quickly get one uh, with a Google or an Amazon search. So where do we go from here? Well, we have a general idea of the hardware requirements. Uh, that we need, you know, to run Linux CNC. So we should be rounding up a, a computer that we'll, that we can use for that. And if it has a parallel port uh, card, that's great because that's where we're going to start with in this series. And if it doesn't, then uh, need to uh, locate one uh, to figure out uh, what parallel port card you need. Just open up and look at the slots, and you know, you'll order a PCI, a PCI or PCIe. Uh, card or, or whatever slot that your computer has in it and get that ready and in the next video we'll start with the uh, Linux CNC install. As always thank you for taking the time from your busy life to watch my videos. If the videos I produce help you please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. CNC is an exciting and rewarding addition to the home shop and if you have friends that are thinking of dabbling in it please refer them. Other than that have a blessed day.